Hello everyone, we got a lot of news to cover today regarding some situations regarding the potential for what could be yet again another attack on the availability of ammunition and why it could be time to uh, maybe not say panic buy, but uh, if you're not stocked up, this could suck for you for some time in the future. We'll see how it all pans out, but there's a lot of other stuff going on that I wanted to cover. We're going to just rapid fire off a few quick topics and then we'll be talking about the meat and potatoes. So. A lot going on in the news lately when it comes to guns. Just one of the first things that I want to talk about. David Hogg in the news again, Time Magazine. Now, if you look here at the caption, American gun control activist and survivor of the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting, David Hogg, travels with security guards as he lobbies for gun control. Travels with security guards as he lobbies for gun control. Now, top Florida lawmaker says constitutional carry is coming next session. My initial response to this is, yeah, sure, we'll see, bud. Florida is one of those states that they call themselves the gunshine state, but they seemingly have a decent amount of gun control when it comes to calling themselves the gunshine state, and they are potentially going to be the 26th state that could have constitutional carry, but it seems as if we've seen talks about this for years, and Florida kind of just kicks the bucket. You know, the right and the left two wings of the same bird. Do you really think they want you to have actual rights or is this just pandering to their base? Let me know what you think about Florida. If you live in the state of Florida, I'd love to hear your insight about this and how it goes on. Obviously, I don't live there, so I might not have the best opinions on this. Just something that I've seen over time. Let me know what you think. Now, this comes from Newsweek. Items on teacher's wish list include intruder stopping door bar and crayons. Now, this was supposed to be a heart tugging video or a heart tugging article talking about the tragedies that goes on and the force that the or the role that teachers play in it and how they are feeling forced to be the ones responsible for protecting their students. So many people are so close to getting it. The police can't always protect you, especially when the police are nowhere near you. The police have no obligation to protect you. So ultimately, it's each individual's own personal responsibility to take their safety and their protection in their own hands. I'm personally of the opinion that we should not be arming teachers. We should not be forcing teachers to carry a firearm as that's not included in their paycheck. They are not police officers. However, I think that teachers who wish to carry a firearm for personal protection and the protection of life of the students that go there should be allowed to carry a firearm. The initial pushback that we get from a lot of people when they say, oh, what if the teacher just decides to shoot a kid in the face? Or what if a teacher just loses their mind a little bit? Here's the thing. If you are truly of the opinion that you think there are so many teachers out there that are so close to just blowing a gasket and murdering all of their students, that's a much bigger issue than one person who wants to have the means of protection to carry a gun for themselves to protect themselves and the students. That is a much bigger issue if you truly believe that teachers are that hot headed and maybe we need to have some sort of teacher reform. This one was actually pretty big news a few weeks ago and has uh, just recently been updated or maybe just a week ago. A man tried to assassinate Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh over fear of looser gun laws. Yes, I know I said the David Hogg thing earlier was quite possibly the most ironic thing I had heard all week, but this, I think, takes it a step further. Now, Roski indicated that he believed that the justice that he intended to kill would side with Second Amendment decisions that would loosen gun laws. So what did he do? He bought a Glock 17 and other weapons for the express purposes of breaking into Kavanaugh's home and killing him. He traveled from California to Maryland after finding Kavanaugh's address online. If this doesn't beautifully illustrate the failures that is waiting periods and concealed carry laws, I don't know what is. This man passed a background check that included his criminal and mental health history. This man waited at least 10 days to buy this firearm. This man then traveled across the country, concealed carrying a firearm, not regarding any other laws along the way, and then went to go try to kill a Supreme Court justice. These are the people that are saying that you should not own guns. I know it's often a trope to say that people that are of the opinion that you shouldn't have a firearm and that they truly think there's so many deranged people that they're projecting their own weaknesses and insecurities. But this man is literally projecting his insecurities so hard he attempted to kill a Supreme Court justice. The ACLU. Now, if you're aware of guns, gun rights, gun laws, and whatnot, you're aware that the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, 
does not like guns and does not believe the Second Amendment is really a right. So when I first read this, I saw civil rights advocates are unsettled by California gun control bill. And I assumed that this article was going to be targeting firearms policy coalition, gun owners of America, the NRA, big organizations like that, that are pro gun. No, I was wrong. This bill goes on to talk about how, so <laughs> how a B or Senate bill 1327, which is modeled after Texas abortion ban. This bill would allow private citizens to sue other people who manufacture or are in possession of ghost gun kits or ghost guns or assault weapons or assault weapon kits. It's unsure how this is all going to pan out, how they define a lot of these things yet, but we will see. Now, Gavin Newsom decided to go after this, the uh, go after guns in the same way that Texas went after abortion and said, so long as the Supreme Court has set this president, California will use it to save lives. Now they can seek up to $10,000 in civil, civil damages per gun. Now, interestingly enough, Hertzberg, one of the people who co-wrote this bill said, emphasize that SB 1327 is the governor's bill and that he is a vessel to ensure its passage. This is the perfect way for a politician to phrase this because what he's doing is allowing himself, if this is successful and if this holds up, he gets to say, yeah, I wrote that bill, put it on his credit. He gets to say, yep, that was me. I did it. Great job. Me reelect me. But if this goes bad, he gets to say, I was just doing what the governor told me to do. The Newsom, this was all Newsom's idea. I didn't want any of this. It's all his idea. I just did what he wanted me to do. It was all him. I was just following orders. Now, then he goes on to say, we have to invoke every decision of the Supreme Court, whether we like it or not. And I don't like it. I think that there's some really significant problems with it. But in the United States of America, when five justices say that this is the rule of law, that becomes the rule of law, he said. So we're going to take advantage of it. But it becomes inoperative if the law changes or if there is some decision that could adversely affect us in some way. He's literally saying that this is an evil, bad law. He's saying that he has problems with it and that he doesn't think this is good. He's saying this is bad, but he's going to do it anyway. These are truly evil people we're dealing with. Now, the ACLU of Northern California had this to say that they said it's an end run around the checks and balances that we generally rely on to protect our constitutional constitutional rights. Very interesting to see the ACLU side with the gun owners on this one, seen as the ACLU generally and typically in the past has not been pro gun whatsoever. Now, eroding court oversight over laws will empower other states to cherry pick the hot button political issues of the day and pass their own SB8 copycat bills to address them. States have already begun to consider these bills to chill abortion rights, transgender rights, and speech rights. With this bill, California is now endorsing and participating in a constitutional arms race where the rights of a person can right where the rights a person can enjoy differ from one state to another. This really brings up that meme of like the, you know, um, people being hung and he's like looking over, he's like first time. Like gun owners have dealt with state lines determining what's a felony and what's not for decades now. And now people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't have different legalities based on one state. What if you had to go to a different state in order to exercise a right? Whoa, what a concept. Okay, let's now get into the meat and potatoes. Probably why you clicked on this video. I'll hopefully have timestamps in the description for people. The NRA reports this. Now, this is just the NRA article. I'm going to have this link down in the description, but really we got to look at here. Larry Keene, breaking news. The U.S. military is actively considering shutting down the sale of M855 slash SS109 from Lake City to the commercial market. M855 green tips, you might know them by one of those names, sold by Lake City. Lake City produces and sells nearly 30% of the ammunition, or this type of ammunition accounts for 30% of what's currently on the civilian market. Let's talk about why that's a huge issue. Well, first of all, if you're aware of supply and demand, uh, when there is less supply and the demand stays the same, uh, people are going to be willing to pay more money for it. Prices are going to go up. This is a huge problem, especially because we've seen things like this before. The Biden administration is now trying to stop Lake City, which is owned by Winchester, from selling off the surplus of ammunition that they might manufacture for government contracts. Could they potentially pivot and use those facilities for other means and produce different types of ammunition? Possibly. Could other smaller or other companies increase their supply or increase their production to meet the demand? 
maybe, but we're already dealing with such high prices, especially when you consider that the potential for the steel ammo supply to start drying up anytime soon in the next year or two, this is going to be a big problem. I think this is going to be a very big problem. You know, for the last two years, I've been shooting mostly steel case 5.56 and 223, as well as steel case 9mm a lot. When the Russian supply dries up, and then if 30% of the current 5.56 and 2.23 ammo on the market dries up, that's going to be a huge, huge destabilization of the market. Thankfully, we've seen companies like Palmetto State Armory investing a lot of money into domestic ammunition production, which is great. Hopefully, things adapt. Hopefully, the ban on the permitting for the import of steel case ammunition lapses and more ammo can come in after the few years we will have to see this is ultimately fairly concerning to me because i know that the cost of shooting can become very prohibitively expensive a lot of people might choose to no longer go out and practice as much as they should and here's why this is a big issue and the anti gunners don't really understand a lot of people think a thousand rounds of ammunition is a lot a thousand rounds of ammunition for someone that's serious about shooting and might go take a training course once or twice a year that's nothing I, I shoot a lot and I don't even shoot as much as a lot of the people out there on YouTube that might shoot even more than me, people that do this professionally. You're going to have cops that are less trained. You're going to have private citizens that are less trained. Do you really want more people to have less ability to train with the firearms? Do you want people to be more dangerous in a less controlled manner? I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. You guys know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.